the controls for for my purpose really seem to be laid out best for left-handed use. The page button, which is right here, which moves between the four primary pages of the unit, falls under my index finger here. And then the up and down arrows and the select button here are under my thumb. Uh, the page button also serves as, a, as the cancel or the back out button here. So if I select something and I want to back out of it, I press the page button. The outside of the unit, and again, this is about a 10 year old unit here that I've had. Um, the, the rubberized surface around the outside edge here uh, is still nice and pliable and tacky feeling. I get a good grip on it. I read a review somewhere online that someone said that theirs had gotten gummy. I suspect that maybe that person might have used a lot of bug spray or something that chemically broke down the, the rubber surface because mine is, has never uh, broken down at all. The battery compartment is in the back uh, with just a little turn of this screw cap you can get to the two AA batteries that it runs on. The screen is not huge but for my purposes and again as I said, I'm not using it for, for mapping, or I'm not trying to, to look at a map on it. I really don't need a lot of screen real estate, and I don't need color, so um, the, the grayscale small screen here works just fine for my purposes. This is the screen that it's on now, this is the menu screen, and once, once I got the unit set up initially, which you do, all of the options are here under setup. I'm not gonna go through that because that would be uh, long and boring. Once I got done with that, really the only option I ever choose on this screen is waypoints. And this is the screen where I can go and I can choose from all of the waypoints I've selected. You can see on the left side, um, they're broken down into groups of alphabetical characters. You select one, uh, for instance, if I'm looking for the waypoint that I just created, on the screen there, demo one, I would I would scroll up and down until I got to the A through D, hit enter, and then I can scroll up and down until I find demo one, which is what I'm looking for there, and I hit select. And then if I want to navigate to that, it automatically puts my, my choice there to go to. I just hit enter, and that takes me to this screen. Now I'm indoors and I don't have a GPS signal, so um, as you can say, see it's telling me I need a clear view of the sky which it's not going to get inside here but if I did it would put up a, a directional arrow on this on this screen here to tell me the the compass direction to that to that spot this screen is the one that I use probably 90 percent of the time when I'm, I'm actually using this unit uh, there's a variety of information that you can get from it along the bottom you can see that it it gives the current location if I if I scroll through using my up and down arrow, the content changes. Uh, if I actually had a, a lock on where I am now, it would tell me the current elevation. It would tell me the bearing to the waypoint that I had selected to go to, but since it doesn't know where I am right now, it, it's not giving me a, num a uh, bearing. It gives me my heading which is the direction I'm actually traveling. And again, it doesn't know where I am, so it can't fill in those numbers right now. It gives me the maximum speed that I've traveled during this leg of my trip. It tells me the average speed. It tells me my current speed. And I get a trip odometer. Now, if I want to reset any of this, I click the enter button. And it gives me the option to reset my max speed, to reset the trip, or I can also stop navigation from here. So if I choose reset my trip, you can see my trip odometer goes to zero there. Okay, I've gone outside and let this get a lock on the satellites to show you the information that's shown in the top area of this screen. It shows me the waypoint that I'm navigating to it shows me the distance, so you can see I'm 23.6 miles from it. And it also gives me, and it did until it lost the satellite signal, um, if I had been traveling, how 
how long it would take at my average rate of speed to get there. So you just the briefly the two other screens. I really don't use them very often. This is the satellite status screen. As you can see, there there is no. I'm not getting any satellite signal because I'm inside. But if I were, there'd be a series of bars that come up along the bottom row here to show me the strength of the various satellites, which are shown up here in sort of a compass view. Kind of useful, I guess, if you're waiting for it to lock onto to the satellites, just help you get an idea of how much longer it might be and whether it's getting a decent satellite signal or not. The other screen is this map screen here, which is kind of worthless, really. It, it shows you um, your tracks, in other words, where you've been. It shows you a directional line here uh, to where your destination, whatever destination you've programmed into it. And it also shows you any nearby waypoints within the scale of the map. You can, by clicking the up or down arrows, you can change the scale as you can see along the bottom of the map here. Um, in this case, I'm um, increasing the area of coverage of the map with each click that I'm going up. And eventually that you'll see that I'll start picking up some of the waypoints that I've created in uh, distant areas right here. We're looking at, uh, I think it says 30 miles away from where I am now. So anyway, it's uh, not a very useful screen. I, I don't really use it that often, but others might find it useful. I, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about how we enter a waypoint on here. From any screen in the GPS, if I press and hold down the enter button here, it'll bring up this, this menu here. And uh, basically, if I want to accept the, the waypoint name that the GPS is assigned, in this case it's 0.71, all I have to do is hit enter again and it'll, and it'll accept my okay there. But what I like to do is I like to give each of my waypoints a custom name so that I can kind of group them and keep up with them. Now, the, light, the naming capabilities in this unit are somewhat limited. You have six characters that you can choose from. So what I do is by clicking the up arrow, it selects the name section here. I hit enter and it, and it brings up this little dialogue where I can change the name. Now, for the purposes of, of this demonstration, I've created a couple of, I've created a couple of waypoints and I've used the naming convention DEM and then uh, three digits after that so that when I go into the menu I can click on the D section and all of my demo waypoints will come up together so all I do is I hit select and this is, gets a little bit tedious doing this but after a while you get fairly fairly good at it and when I'm done the cursor, move, the highlight moves down here to the OK. I hit, click on that, and then if I if I'm okay with that, I just move my highlight back to the OK, and click on that, and I've saved that waypoint. Then, if I had done that out in the field, what I would do is I would write down in my little field notebook the name that I had created, um, why I was creating that waypoint, whether it was. Uh, a feeding area, whether it was a scrape or a rub or a trail or whatever it might have been, and I write that down. And then when I get back, I'll just pull up the coordinates by again going here to my waypoints. Demo three is the one that I just created, and it gives me the coordinates which are some fake coordinates, but anyway, I would, all I would have to do is to enter these coordinates right here into my mapping software and it would, it would put my um, little icon or symbol that I had chosen for that spot exactly where it needed to be.